Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is Mother Vertex and it is an easy level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given a directed graph and we have to find a mother vertex in the graph. So a mother vertex is any vertex from which we can reach all other vertices of the graph. Right. And uh, if you see in this particular example, actually, there are three mother vertices, 0, 1 and 2. Right. So if you start from any one of them, you will be able to reach all the other vertices of the graph. But if there are multiple vertices like this, we have to return the smallest among them. They have not mentioned it in the problem statement. But uh, in the explanation, if you see that uh, they say since 0 is the minimum among 0, 1 and 2, we have to output 0. Right. So this is the whole problem. And if a mother vertex does not exist, we have to print minus 1. Right. So the expected time and space complexity is a bit weird and the time complexity is O of P plus E and the space complexity is O of P. Now for this problem to be an easy level problem, I don't think that we can solve it in V plus E. Uh, I'll tell you why. So one of the approaches which I have is running a DFS or a BFS from all the vertices. So a single DFS would take around V plus E time and if you run for all the vertices, it would be V into V plus E. Right. So instead of just V plus E, it should be V into V plus E. And for that, this can be an easy level problem. But if we want to do it in only V plus E, then I believe that uh, this should not be an easy level problem because it requires you to have some understanding of how condensation graph looks like or how SECs work. Because uh, like I have solved it in V plus E and that is a method that we, we are going to discuss. But it is not at all an easy level topic, I believe. So let us see how we can solve this problem and let me also take this particular uh, sample test case. So we see that this is the graph that has been given to us. Now as I have already discussed that one method is to run DFS, DFS from all vertices, right. So a single DFS usually takes V plus E. You can also choose to run BFS, it is totally correct. And if you want to run from all vertices, it will be V into V plus E. Later, when I looked at the official editorial, they have done the same thing it with BFS. So I highly recommend you to once try with BFS. I have not tried it. Anyways, let us discuss the more efficient method which should work in O of V plus E. Right. Now, you will see that this graph that has been given to us in the example actually contains one cycle. Right. So this is one cycle that we have. Right. So before discussing this particular example, let us discuss a case where there is not a cycle, right? So it will be a directed graph, but will be, there will be no cycles inside it, right? So if we have a graph like this and there are no cycles, you will observe that if I am able to find a node which has n degree equals to 0, so if the n degree equals to 0, that node can be one of my possible answers. Now you might say, what if there are multiple nodes with n degree 0? So let's say like this, right? So now there are two nodes, this node as well as this node, which have in degree zero. In this case, you will see that the answer is never possible. And my final answer is going to be minus one. Why? Because let's say I start my DFS with this particular node. I will never be able to reach this second node because it has a in degree zero. Similarly, if I start from here, I will never be able to reach this particular node because it has in degree zero. So I have concluded that First of all, if my graph doesn't have any cycles, so it will be a DAG. So DAG actually stands for directed, directed acyclic graph, right? So if I somehow have a DAG or a directed acyclic graph and there is exactly one node with n degree zero, then only I'll be able to find my answer and my answer will be the node with the n degree zero. Right. So in this case, this is going to be my final answer, right? Because it has n degree zero. If there are multiple nodes with n degree zero, that means my answer will never be possible. And I have just discussed why, why it is not possible. And if none of the nodes have n degree zero, then it will never be a directed acyclic graph because there must be somewhere a cycle only then there will be no nodes with n degree zero, right? So we have discussed all the three cases where there are multiple nodes, multiple nodes, nodes with n degree 0, n degree 0, one node with n degree 0 and zero nodes with n degree 0, right? So this is the case where the answer will never exist. This is the case where this one node with n degree 0 will be our final answer. And this is the case when our graph is not a DAG or not a directed acyclic graph, right? 
Now we have discussed this part, but the question does not guarantee us a directed acyclic graph. The input that has been given to us may contain some cycles. So how do we deal with that? So for dealing with the cycles, I have to introduce a new concept called condensation graph. So let us see what is a condensation graph. Right. So you see, here I have these three nodes, which are in a cycle. Right. So this one, this one and this one. Now, can I represent them as a single unit or a single vertex? So let's say this whole node is considered as node A. This is node B and this is node C. Now I can draw the same graph. I can draw the same graph like this. Right. Like this. So this will be node A, this will be node B and this will be node C. Right. So now you see that these two graphs are actually very similar. And if I visit any one of the nodes, if I visit any one of the nodes in this particular whole vertex, then I'll be able to visit all the other two nodes as well. Right. So I can write th those three of them as a single unit or a single node. And this combination of multiple vertices into one is called a condensation graph. So basically, if I have a bigger vertex like this, it might have some internal vertices like this as well, where from each node, I will be able to reach every other node, right? This is the important condition that from each node, I should be able to reach every other node. Only then all of those vertices can be combined. Now this one vertex can be related to some other vertex as well, right? Like this, right? So let me just explain you this thing with a better example. I have copied this image from the internet. So here you see that in each component, this is one big component and you will see that each vertex is connected to every other vertex inside this component, right? So this is going to be one big vertex. Now this whole component is connected to this particular node. How is it connected to this node? You will see that this smaller vertex is actually connected to this node. But if you are at any vertex inside this bigger vertex, you will always be able to reach from here to here. Why? Because from this particular node, you can go to this node and from this node, you can go to this one. Right. So you see these set of vertices is combined into a single vertex and this type of graph is called a condensation graph. Right. Now a condensation graph is always expected to be a directed acyclic graph. There will not be any cycles inside this particular graph. Now, how can we confirm that this will actually be a directed acyclic graph? So let us assume that this is not a DAG actually. So if there are some cycles like this, from this node, I can go to this particular node, then you will realize that uh, this particular component, this whole component can actually be combined into one. If there exists any cycle like this, then both of these vertices will be combined into one vertex. So one thing is for sure that the condensation graph is actually going to be a directed acyclic graph. So now if I have a DAG and I've already discussed that inside a DAG, if there is exactly one node with n degree zero, then my answer is going to be that particular node. Now, how do I actually confirm that there is exactly one node with n degree zero? Because when we talk about n degrees, we generally talk about in terms of vertices, but in the condensation graph, there is no vertices actually because one vertex is formed by combining several other vertices. So actually this one vertex is also called a strongly connected component or in short a SCC, right? So we have these SCCs with us and we cannot directly find the in degree of any SCC, right? So now we are going to use a concept of out time, right? So I believe that you must be hearing many of these terminologies for the first time that we have discussed. For example, we have discussed about DAG, we have discussed about condensation graph, we have discussed about SCC and now we are finally discussing about out time. So I could have directly just told you that this problem can be solved with two DFS, but if you don't actually know the reason behind applying two DFS, then you will never be able to solve this problem on your own. So that is why I am discussing all the ideas which are used behind solving this problem. And if you follow this particular problem in this order, then I believe you will be able to understand all the concepts properly. So we have discussed that we cannot directly find the in degree of SCCs, right? Here we do not have vertices, but instead we have strongly connected components. Now, to find out the in degree, we are rather going to use a different parameter that is the out time of nodes, right? So let us take this first example that we discussed. So what is the in time and out time of nodes? In time is the time where 
I visit the node for the first time and out time is going to be the time where I leave the node, right? So for example, let us start with zero. The in time of this particular node is going to be zero because I am starting my DFS from here. So now I come to this node, the second node. So the in time will be one, right? Now I come to this particular node. So the in time will be three, right? Now I'm going to leave this node because there are no further nodes from here. I'm going to go back from this node. So the out time is going to be four. Now I come back to this node and I go to the next node here. So the in time is going to be five. And since there are no further nodes, I'm going to exit from here. So the out time is going to be six. Now, after coming back to this node, this node, you will realize that there are no further nodes. So I'm going to exit from here. So the out time is going to be seven. And when I go to the original node, the root node where I started from, I have no further nodes. So the out time is going to be eight and I'm going to exit from here. So you will always observe that any node, any node with the in degree zero will have the maximum out time because the nodes with the in degree zero will be exited at the last, right? All the other nodes which have some in degree will be exited before the node will with the in degree equals to zero. Now let us consider an example how it looks when we have a normal graph, right? Now this graph may contain some cycles. So this is my graph and let's say this is like this. Now actually let me just draw it as well. So this component is going to be one SCC and this component is going to be another SCC, right? But let us discuss without these circles, how our in time and out time will look like. So let us say I start my DFS from here. So this has the in time equals to one. Now the in time of this will be two and the in time of this particular node will be three, right? Since this node is already visited, I'm going to go back from here. This is going to be four. This is going to be five. And this is going to be six, right? Now I cannot go to any other node. So I come to here. This is the next unvisited node. So I'm the in time is going to be seven. Since this node is already visited now, I'm going to mark its out time as eight. Now these nodes are not visited. So I'm going to visit them. Let's say this is going to be nine and this is going to be 10. It's going to be 11. Since this node is already visited, I'm going to go back from here. It is going to be 12, 13, and then 14, right? So this is how the out times look like. Now you might wonder, what if I start my DFS from some other place? I started my DFS this time from these, these nodes, right? Now let me draw the exact same graph and you will observe something very interesting. So this is my graph. These are my nodes like this. Hmm. Right, so this is the exact same graph. Now let us say I start my DFS from this particular component. So I'm starting from here. Let's say this is one. This is going to be two. This is going to be three. And then I can go from here to here. So this is going to be four. This is going to be five. This is going to be six. And this is going to be seven. Now, since this particular node is already visited, I'm going to go back. So this is going to be eight. This is going to be nine. This is going to be 10. So I'm marking the out time of nodes. This is going to be 11. This is going to be 12. This is going to be 13. And this is going to be 14. Now, you must have observed one very important thing here. So this particular strongly connected component and the same component here always have the highest three out degrees, right? So here it is 12, 13, 14, and here it is also 12, 13, 14 in both of the cases. You see, this is 12, 13, 14 and here also. So no matter where I start my DFS from, the nodes with the maximum out degree are always going to be the nodes with the smallest in degree, right? So this is how I have proved it with different examples. You see in this particular case, I started my DFS from this SCC and in this case, I started my DFS from the last SCC. In both of the cases, these three nodes, which have the lowest in degree, had the highest out time. So now I have come to the conclusion that the nodes with, with the highest out time, out time are, are going to be the candidate for the mother vertex, right? Now, again, they are going to be the candidate for the mother vertex. It is not sure that they are going to be the mother vertex, right? Why am I choosing the word candidate? Because here you see, we discussed that there should be exactly one node with in degree zero, right? 
But if there are multiple nodes with n degree 0, then our answer is never going to be possible. So for example, if I had a case like this, let me just erase some of it. Let's say, let's say I had a case like this. Now I say that if there are multiple nodes with n degree 0, my answer will never be possible. So instead of finding out how many nodes have n degree 0, what I'm trying to do is I'm just going to take one of the nodes and start my DFS from there. If I'm not able to find my answer, then obviously my answer will not be possible. So this is exactly what I'm trying to do. I will take the node with the highest out time, right? So I'm going to take the node with the highest out time. And if I'm able to find my answer after starting my DFS from there, then that node will be my final answer. Otherwise, the answer will never be possible. Right. So this was the whole idea that I used behind this particular problem. And that is why I said this can never be an easy level problem. If you follow this idea, there should be at least an upper medium level problem. So let us see how the code looks. So the code is actually very simple. I could have just directly told you that you need to apply to DFS. Right. There is nothing apart from it here. But that way you will never be able to understand why this works. So you see, I have created a vector called order and I have also created a visited vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my DFS1 function. So I'm just going through all the vertices and if my current vertex is not visited, I'm going to call DFS1. So DFS1 does nothing. It just calls a simple DFS function. So I mark my current node as visited for all the children that are not visited for the current node. I also start a DFS from them. Right. Now, when I exit from this node, I'm going to push this node into my order vector. So in my order vector, all of the nodes will be arranged in increasing order of out time. Right. That means the last node in the order vector will have the highest out time. Right. So now what I do, I mark all of my visited vector as zero. I initialize my remaining variable with the number of vertices. Now, since my last node has the highest out time, I'm going to start my DFS from the last node. Right. Now the same function. Now, instead of pushing something into the order vector, I'm just going to decrement the value of remaining. So if I visit all the vertices at the end, this remaining value will be zero. So if remaining equals to zero, my answer will be order dot back. Otherwise, the answer will be minus one. So this would be the solution for this particular problem. And let me just quickly submit this and show you that this works. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.